This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, horizontal chop in a morgagnon cataract. That's what we're going to discuss in this video. Hypermature cataracts are challenging simply because the nucleus is mobile and we don't have the cushion of the epinucleus in the cortex. Many of these hypermature long-standing cataracts do have a problem with the capsule as well. The capsules more often than not would be very friable, thin and they could have specks of calcification as we have here. Along with that, we could also have a zonular weakness. So these are the points to consider when dealing with these cases. Now, assuming that we get the rexis right, we still have a nucleus management which is much more trickier than a conventional case. The nucleus could be hard and since it's mobile, it's difficult to hold it and chop. So we need to use the right strategies for such a case. So because the nucleus is mobile, among the two chop techniques which we have, I would prefer and recommend a horizontal chop technique in these cases simply because the direction of the movement of the chopper is much more physiological and you're more likely to get the split effortlessly without causing any split compared to that of a vertical chop. And the most important secret to get a good chop is to get a good hold. The secret to get a good hold is to ensure that the tip is buried deep down into the core of the nucleus. And these are the details which are going to discuss in this video. The two side ports are made using a bent MVR plate which is about 1.1 millimeter. Staining of the capsule is quite critical. So I use a 1ml syringe which is pre-filled with air and has a dye. So the staining is done under the air bubble. Dispersive OVD uh, which contains sodium hyaluronate and chondritin sulfate combination is used to form the chamber and coat the endothelium. The globe is stabilized using a second instrument and a 2.8 millimeter limbal paste incision is created. The tunnel is slightly longer than what I would have liked but it's alright. So as soon as I puncture the capsule, as expected, the liquefied cortex flows up. And once the flap is raised, I always prefer to use a forceps to perform rexis. So I'm going to use the Dr. Haldi Purkar rexis forceps and a properly sized rexis is created. The superficial epinucleus in cortex is already removed. To get a good hold of the nucleus, I would like to create a small central pit this gives me access to the central core of the nucleus. I would have sculpted about 50% a deep trench in the center. I'm going to swap my second instrument to a horizontal chopper. This is the Chang chopper. I'm going to use the longitudinal energy in the burst form to bury the tip of the phaco into the nucleus. A short burst of phaco is given to ensure so the entire exposed tip goes and buries itself into the substance of the nucleus. There is a slight pull of the nucleus towards myself so that the equator is exposed easily and then the chopper goes under the rexus margin, hooks the equator of the nucleus and then it is moved towards the phaco tip. So as we can see there is hardly any torque, the nucleus can be split quite easily. It may not go full through and through, doesn't matter, you do a little bit of lateral separation, rotate the nucleus. And again repeat the same maneuver. Bury the tip into the nucleus. And the tip pulls up the nucleus towards me to expose the equator. And the chopper goes in directly opposite to the tip and is hooking the equator. And then it is moved towards the tip. And once the split is done, we need to do additional lateral separation maneuvers very gently so that the posterior plate is broken. So this maneuver of uh, horizontal chopping is continued very carefully until we have the required number of small fragments. So because the capsular bag will be very fragile in these patients, we need to be ensuring that the chamber is always deep and all our maneuvers have to be as gentle as possible. So the biggest challenge was dividing the nucleus into smaller fragments. And that is done. Now is the easier aspect of the surgery that is quadrant removal. So for quadrant removal, as you all know, that I would be preferring the torsional ultrasound mode, and each of these fragment is pulled out of the bag and then emulsified at the level of the rexus margin in a controlled manner. We don't want any chatter, we don't want any turbulence. So this is controlled by giving the adequate amount of energy. 
and this is the last piece and we can see that the the fragment doesn't leave the tip of the phaco it would be dancing around the phaco tip and eventually it gets emulsified there would be some cortex which would be sticking and it would take a couple of minutes for me to remove this i need to be very gentle and very careful and uh, slowly but surely the entire cortex is removed off the bag is filled with ovd and the originally planned single piece iol is placed in the bag common question which is asked is how do i remove the ovd so my preference is always to go in with just the irrigation cannula first maybe go through the main incision depress the main wound so that the ovd which is there in the anterior chamber just flows out easily and then maybe you can use one of the side ports to go under the lens lift up the lens and then just irrigate you don't have to use the aspiration port behind the lens the aspiration port is held anteriorly in the anterior chamber whereas the irrigation is in the back behind the lens and in, in a couple of minutes we can see the entire oily ovd is just flushed out and the bag is totally devoid of ovd this is a very quick and safe way to remove ovd you don't have to panic about it that's it the case is done the side ports are hydrated and this is how it looks at the end of the surgery so that was it thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful